Are you ready to turn game night into glam night? Come with me as we transform these unassuming Dollar Tree poker chips into absolutely stunning charms for your next journal. I'm Ingrid Carlson, and I am so glad that you are here today. A big warm welcome to you. And if you're not already subscribed, I would love for you to do so, as well as hit the like button if you like this video. So if you want to learn how to do this for your next journal, stay tuned. We are going to grab our poker chips from Dollar Tree and there are four different varieties. I'm looking at them more for colors than the numbers, although you already know that I love adding numeral aspects to my journals. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the sanding block and if you didn't see this sanding block little tool, it's from my last Dollar Tree haul and I'm going to scuff up all of the poker chips. Now, I'm not sure if this is necessarily needed because of the way that we're going to paint them, but I went ahead and did it for a safe measure. My secret weapon today is gonna to be some baking soda, which I'm going to lay into several piles on my desk so that I can mix with my acrylic paints. And I'm just eyeballing for texture. You're going to see that the first mixture that I make here with this white Dollar Tree paint comes out a little too thick and you can see it in the end. So I would say that you want to add enough baking soda that it gives it some grit, but you still want the paint to be the main aspect of the consistency, if that makes sense. So I'm just mixing up several colors and I will tell you later exactly what the colors are. And I'm going to coat one side and then dry it. And then I will do the other side. I only did one coat on each of the chips, but if you want it to be darker, you could definitely do two coats. Although I would be a little weary if you're adding the baking soda that you don't want to cover the numbers up because that really is a nice textural element that we want peeking through.
Here are my coins completely done and you can see there's areas here where there's like extra and then areas here where it's kind of wiped off, which I love because I want this to look grungy. And I think they all took really well. Probably this one, which I maybe added a little bit too much of the baking powder and so, or the baking soda. And so it kind of clumped up a little bit around the edges. So I would say, you know, be mindful of that. But I love the way they all came out. So our next step is going to be distressing. <clears throat> so in this case, we have blue and it was on top of red, I believe, which I think will be really nice. So we can take our sanding block and we can just lightly sand just in different spots. I want to try to get a little bit more of the numbers. Look how cute that looks. This one was green on top or yellow on top of green. Yeah, so I think the white paint was the least effective. And that was Dollar Tree paint, so I don't know if that has something to do with it. This was the black on top of blue. Very cute. And this is also blue with the green. So that's all I'm going to take off. I'm just going to lightly dust and now I'm going to grab my gold paint and this paint is from Target it's the handmade modern brand and it's in the color 20k gold every time I play with this I think of Bruno Mars Okay, and now I'm going to just go around the edges, wherever. It doesn't need to be perfect or completely unison around the edges. I just wanna get some, some sparkle in there. Go with less and then you can add more later. I'm using a flat brush here. I'm gonna go a little extra on the white just because we've already kind of scratched out so much. I'm going to try to go maybe over the yellow pieces. And these are your creations, so feel free to go as deep or as not with the color. And then once you've gone over it once, with the color that you, or with the gilding or the gold, then you can go through and add more. So that one has the most. I'm gonna try to take a little off. So I'm gonna wet my brush and just go in here. 
I have to work quickly so it doesn't activate the color underneath. And I think it's going to sew. I'm just gonna grab a tiny bit of that color. Oops, my brush was a little too wet. Take that water off of there. Make sure my brush is dry and I'm gonna grab just a tiny bit of that color and go back in and color over it. But I love already on this one how we've got the gold, we've got this like mustard, which this yellow is golden ochre. And then the gold, I think that that looks so good. It's It looks like a copper roof, you know, like that age distress look. And I'll go ahead and tell you all the colors. This is Joanne's brand, Top Notch, and it's matte in beach glass. This one's also top notch, and this is in pale green. And then this is raw umber from Folk Art. We're going to allow these to dry. And then if you want to do the other side, you can. I'm just going to do one side today because I want one side to be the focal point. And, but feel free to do both sides if you want, and I'll be back. So now I'm going to grab my We Are Memory Creep <laughs> Keepers Cropodile. I'm also going to grab some of these like golden seed beads. These are from Dollar Tree. I have these as well. They're like little, they almost feel rubberized and they're from Dollar Tree as well. Some of this 26 gauge floral wire, also from Dollar Tree, and we're gonna grab our eyelets. And if you remember, I told you that I was keeping a secret and I was gonna tell you where I got these awesome eyelets from, and it's not what you're expecting. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna decide the placement of my hole for my eyelet. And also, I'm gonna go ahead and grab, I have five coins, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab five eyelets. And I'm gonna go ahead and do all gold. So here, if you want to be very meticulous and you don't want to make any mistakes, then you can mark where you want your hole to be. So let's say I want it there. That would be the center-ish of my hole. Because these are the bigger eyelets, and you can kind of tell by the inside of the hole, it matches that hole more than the smaller one. So I'm going to use the, the bigger side here. I'm gonna line it up and where my circle is that I just made or my little mark. And I can tell there that it's not centered. So if I wanted to center it, I could, which I'll probably do right here. And then I'm gonna stick, and it was off center a little bit. I think I was centered the first time. Never second guess yourself. I'm going to take this and now set the eyelet and look at this. This already has transformed this from a little cheap plastic poker piece to a actual charm. 
So again, we're gonna do the same thing with all of them. On this one, I'll try to stay centered. And I don't think it's that important to have it centered. If you do, then by all means, center away. Two more to go. And our last one. And I don't think I'm gonna mark it just because, well, yeah, I can still see it. And now is the fun part. We're going to build this up. So we're going to build these up as kind of little charms. And I'm going to take the wire and I'm gonna double whatever size it is because this wire is pretty thin. doubled and I don't know if I had to guess this is about six inches I would say I'm gonna start with this and then we'll we'll play around with it it's actually almost seven inches so I know that I want this to be a loop here so that I can attach this somewhere. I can attach this to a paper clip, I can attach it to a binder clip, I can attach it to a bullpen. I mean, really, I can even attach this to the page, especially with this kind of wire. It You can even staple this on and I'll show you that. So first, I want to kind of see where I'm at with my with my sizing. So that looks about right. That's probably about th four inches, maybe three, three inches. And I'm going to grab some of my beads on side. And I'm just gonna string them through here. Now, whatever bead you use, the bigger the center hole is, the easier it'll be for you. Let's do a green. And I'm gonna see if I can add any of these beads. They're seed beads, so they're really small. And my thought is I could add them to one of these and string it through. So I'm gonna do three on one side and maybe four on the other. my four if I can find them these little beads are so hard to to string 
one more. Okay, so I have them on both sides. And now again, I'm gonna come back to how long I want my my string to be. And I'm gonna loop it on inside of this so that it kind of stays. And then here, I'm going to tie these off. We're gonna do two knots. And then I'm going to cut the excess off. And there's our first piece. So now we're gonna do this one and we can do all different variations. We can use different types of beads. I did find these little bells from last Christmas. So I think that would be a lot of fun. So on this one, I'm actually going to just add the bell and nothing else. So, okay, we're going to take our wire and do the exact same thing that we did before. Except I'm going to see if I can get this on, on both. And on this one, what I can do, I'll, I'll let that fall for now. What I'm going to do here is I'm gonna twist the wire. And I kinda like the look of it twisted So I'm going to go back towards the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom and I'm going to leave the twists right at the bottom and twist the whole thing. Towards the bottom edge. I think that's good and I'll cut these off and then take the remainder and just fold it so that it's not poking. So this is what we're left with. And we're going to do the same thing here. We're gonna loop it back through one time. And now we have our second one. You could also leave it blank. We'll make one like that. Let's do this one like that since it has the most amount of gold. And then again, we're just going to feed it back through the hole. And I'm gonna go back over and then just tie it off. And cut off the excess. that one. I really, I think I really like these little gold beads. And so we're going to do another one like that, except this time we're just going to do the gold beads and not 
the, not the other beads. And I think I'm gonna pull the 50 piece one just because that one has the least amount of gold. Go ahead and string it through. And now we're going to feed those beads. I know I'm a glutton for punishment because I just said these are so hard. I feel like the best way to do them is to put them on the palm of your hand and then just kind of like stab at them. Unfortunately, I have to hold my hand forward so that you can see it in the camera. So it's really hard for me. I just lost the one I did. It's hard for me to see where they're at. So bear with me. And this one, I'm going to do more than what I did. So that was four, five, six, seven, eight. Let me get some bigger ones. Nine, ten. And I'm going to make sure they go all the way to the bottom. And I'm going to hold that still in place with my finger. And I'm gonna go through, hopefully, not lose any. We've got one. <laughs> one. I feel like once one goes, they all start going. So it's just getting up. A couple first ones. Okay, let's start that. Again, and on the second side, I'm gonna use less just to offset it so they're not 100% even. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and let's do eight. So it's two off. even though it looks pretty much the same. So that's okay. I also am noticing because I'm doing the beads right up next to it, it's giving me, they're wanting to go inside. So next time I would do this, I would tie a knot here first before I doing that. But it's okay, I'm not, I'm not too upset with this. And on this one, I'm gonna make this a little different as well because I'm going to tie them in the knot and then I'm gonna leave some tails or some of the tail. And I'm gonna cut one a little shorter than the last, just to give it some visual um, interest. Look how cute that looks. And then on this one, let's go ahead and do maybe a mix of all. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so that I have more playroom. While I'm doing this, I just want to encourage you today to go to your stores or even better to shop your, your stash that you have at home and find pieces that are meant for one thing and then you can use them for something else. 
you never know what jewels you have waiting for you. On this one, I'm just making some knots in it and I'm kind of looping on the top and then looping through the bottom. And actually, I kind of like the look of this. It was accidental, so I just looped it through so it came up on the same side. And let's go ahead and add our, our stuff to that. I'm gonna start off with one of these black ones, then the, the bell. There we go. And then I'm gonna finish it off with some, let's see, what about another black and then gold? Nope, <laughs> immediately no. I'm gonna to try to use these on my desk that have fallen astray. And I apologize, my nails have stuff all over them from the paint. Did you guys see that? That was amazing. That just strung like on accident. Kind of done that if I tried. And I'm just going to play this by ear and see. I think that's good. Let's see, should we do on the other side or just leave it as one. I kind of just like it as one. So, oh, I'm gonna go risky here. I'm gonna go back through these with the extra string. So I'm gonna go back through the black one It's hard because this gauge is so thin and pliable. Okay, I did it. <laughs> and then, should I? I think I'll leave it with this. So I'm going to go around the bottom of this, of the bell and just make a knot here. I'm not a jewelry person, so everything that I do is probably against any jewelry making professionals. And if you are a jewelry person and you're like, what in the world? You're probably right. <laughs> I'm just making some knots here. And then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna run it through the bell. And then I'm gonna tie this in a knot at the end over here. Ooh. Did we just do it? Almost. What's that saying? Don't count your chickens before they're hatched, that your eggs before they're hatched. <laughs> I can't celebrate yet until I have successfully tied this off. And I'm just doing knots. This would be a lot easier if I was more up on it instead of to the side of it. And I think I'm gonna do one more knot and then just leave it. I 
And it's funny because this one's the most haphazard of all of them. It's the one that has the least amount of, of um, like rhyme or reason, but I think it's my favorite. Because <laughs> it's so quirky. And there you go. Now you have little coins that you can make or little charms that you can make using your poker chips. And um, I encourage you next time you go into the store to look for some and make some for yourself. So I want to thank you so much for being here. Thank you for all of your love and your comments. I appreciate them so much. I'm so thankful that you're here watching with me. I know you could be doing a million other things. And I just want to tell you I appreciate you. I love you. A big thank you to my patrons. I love you guys. And I want to tell you, just in case you have not been told today, you're beautiful, you are loved, and you matter. You matter so much, and I just want you to know that today. If that's all you take away from this video, then that's okay with me. I love you guys. Until next time. Bye.